So everybody, we just got a look at this. Yes, we finally get a look at Joker in the Snyder Cut. But not only that, Snyder just spilled a bunch of information about Ben Affleck's Batman, his plans for the story between Joker and Batman, what we're going to get in Justice League. And we're even talking haha jokes on you, Batman, Robin level suit stuff in the Batcave. Like a bunch of information that you guys are going to want to stick around for. So yeah, let's talk about this. What is up, Bat Family? Welcome to my breakdown video of what we literally just got. It's already trending everywhere on the internet, and that is what Zack Snyder has decided to share with Vanity Fair. I didn't mean to make that rhyme, but seriously, this is going to be very a very interesting video because I literally just saw this image for the first time a few minutes ago, and this is my immediate reaction. We're going to get into the details of what the heck this means, what Zack Snyder teased of what we're going to see in the Snyder Cut, the kind of vibe between Batman, the conversations they'll have and their history and what he wanted to explore between these two characters and as I teased Robin stuff but as you're seeing these images on screen right now here's my take here's my take what do I think of this one thing I will say is that <laughs> let me just say straight off the bat it is better than Suicide Squad no matter what I, you may have seen me break down the image the blurry image last week we could obviously tell that they were utilizing Jared Leto's longer hair that he has in real life but we didn't really know too much else of what was going on we guessed that he didn't have the tattoos but at the same time that could have been so blurry to the point where the damage couldn't have been seen but evidently here we can't see any tattoos but the thing I don't quite know how to feel here even with bearing in mind that this is from the nightmare sequence and I get it I get it to all the really hardcore Snyder fans out there this is the nightmare horrific version of Joker right he's meant to be a disheveled you know creature that is as Vanity Fair even described it who's maybe even clawed his way out of Arkham Asylum and somehow he is at this point and I get that. I, I do think that this is more favorable than the Suicide Squad look, but I'm not a big fan of the blood-stained mouth. But just before I get into the details, I do dig it. Is it really the Joker look I would want even from the Suicide Squad film? Like, let's wind back the clocks to when that was first coming out. If this was the look, I still probably would be like, nah, I wanted more of a Joker, Joker look. Even though this is Joker in terms of ticking a few boxes, obviously, it's not my preference, but you may love this. You really may love this. I do think it's an upgrade. I'm not denying that in terms of what we did get. The tattoo, like anything's an upgrade from the tattoos, in my opinion. And I am very intrigued to see what this is going to look like in the horrific nightmare future. And don't forget to let me know, of course, well, I'm sure you are anyway, what you <laughs> what you think of this down in the comments. There is a bunch I need to get into with what Zach has to say about this and everything I teased at the beginning of the video. So I'm going to be reading out some stuff from Vanity Fair and then I'm going to express my thoughts on it as you'd expect. So what they first have to say, of course, are gone are the face tattoos and slicked back emerald undercut hairstyle of that movie replaced by a visage that looks like a creature who crawled out from the basement of a long abandoned insane asylum maybe he did which well yes there this is the nightmare dark side version of the future I, I completely understand how he can look like this and that's why I still say even though it's not my preference it's most certainly an upgrade in terms of the freaking tattoos my god Leto is wearing a hospital gown and a surgical mask in the photo Snyder released exclusively to Vanity fair which the director says is probably a remnant of his escape into the world when the world fell. In some of his Justice League scenes Leto's Joker also sports a bulletproof vest festooned with grimy law enforcement badges. He has tons of badges Snyder said. Those are his trophies. Now what I love about what Snyder is spilling here in this article is that it's expanding the lore of, of what we're going to see in the Snyder Cut but with this character. Say what you will about Jerry Litter's Joker but I love hearing from the point of in this uh, you know alternate future if you will where Darkseid you know conquered what Jared Leto's Joker did and now he's collecting these badges and how they're his, his trophies how he's got a surgical mask and all of these kind of things I still want to know about the blood though did he become a freaking cannibal <laughs> Vanity Fair go and say that Joker appears in the new film during a sequence set on a ruined earth after the alien tyrant Darkseid invades and decimates the planet it's a dream sequence a psychic vision experienced by Ben Affleck's Bruce Wayne that reveals what will happen if the superheroes fail to stop the onslaught. Joker is sort of the ghost of Christmas yet to come, supplying motivation through terror. Now this is what Zack specifically has to say, quote unquote, that the cool thing about the scene is that it's Joker talking directly to Batman 
about Batman. It's Joker analyzing Batman about who he is and what he is. That's the thing I also felt like fans deserved from the DC Universe. That is to say, the Jared Leto Joker and the Ben Affleck Batman, they never really got together. It seemed uncool to me that we would make it all the way through this incarnation of Batman and Joker without seeing them come together. And I 100% and I agree with that. Despite all of those movies, and despite what I thought of Ben Affleck, sorry, Joker, Jared Leto's Joker, I, I always wanted to see them together, like, which was always for many different reasons. For example, I really liked the look of Ben Affleck's Batman, there's some things I didn't like about him, but the overall image I just thought didn't suit the Joker we got in the Snyderverse, but I still wanted to see what those characters interacting would be like, and for you, all you Snyder fans out there, he released this image a few days ago, and people were already theorizing, correctly so, because these images do match up that he was looking down that hallway on his way to see the Joker or speak to him. And it turns out that was a little tease from Snyder before these images came out because it seems to be a place where Joker is potentially being held by Batman in the Nightmare sequence. So that is super interesting and a super cool tease. And many, many Snyder fans cracked that before all of this even came out today. And once again, to reiterate, I'm 100% on board of that. And I'm glad that Snyder gave this to us in his four hour cut of the Snyder cut, just because we we do need to see what they're like interacting, especially with some nuggets of gold about the lore and the history between them both, about Wayne Manor burning down, Jason's death, that he goes on to tease in just a second. That is that is something, despite what I think, I need to know about like, as a fan. I want to know how things exactly went down within the DCEU between these characters, despite all the movies we got, with no inkling other than the Robin suit saying, haha jokes on you Batman. So buckle up, this is what he had to say about that. The scene explains why Bruce had the Joker card taped to his gun that you see in Batman vs Superman. I'd always wanted to explore the death of Robin and if there ever was going to be a next movie, which of course there probably won't be, I wanted to do a thing where in flashbacks we learn how Robin died, how Joker killed him and burned down Wayne Manor, and that whole thing that happened between he and Bruce. The director's plan was to show how they became like this, how he hurt him in a way that no one has really. Other than losing his parents, it was probably the most significant personal injury to his life. And interestingly, Vanity Fair says that's the role this new Joker sequence will fulfill in the Justice League Snyder Cup. So just briefly recapping and going over what Zach just said about that, since he's kind of acknowledging, I mean, never say never, right, but that there won't be another film in terms of how he wanted to explore the whole history, how Joker hurt him, like no one ever has aside from the death of his parents, and we always know Batman kind of needs a Robin, and he lost that one Robin that he did have. And, you know, say what you will about the Snyderverse, but I am I'm intrigued, something I keep repeating in this video, to get more of that. The stuff that I think us Bat fans really wanted in terms of when we saw BVS for the first time, and even Suicide Squad. Like, why don't these characters ever meet? Why didn't they interact? What does the haha -ha jokes on New Batman really mean? There's so many blanks that I'm glad, as he's acknowledged here, and what Vanity Fair kind of teased, with this four hour cut, they're probably gonna reference the past in their conversation in the nightmare sequence. And that will be so good because as he said, it's kind of Joker kind of figuring out Batman in that moment for who Batman is, trying to like basically talking directly to Batman about Batman and that will definitely ruffle a few feathers I'm sure and in a world where it's like the nightmare sequence I'm just interested to see how Batman acts to Joker why he's keeping him alive and we know that Batman's got to go down that corridor and that weird ass kind of place that he's got where Joker is sitting there and I can't wait to see what that conversation is going to be about. Well, we already got a tease from Vanity Fair saying that that's what this new Joker sequence will fulfill in Justice League, the whole discussion of the plan about how they became like this, how we hurt them in a way that no one has. And obviously that was meant to be really dived into a lot more in a potential future film, but Snyder's going to do what he possibly can in this four hour cut with a much bigger nightmare sequence than what we got originally. Now, if you're really wondering about the tattoos, I really do feel like Snyder's answer is just brushing it off as to, well, we just kind of retconned it, basically, because Vanity Fair say what happened since we last saw Joker in Aya's film. Is there tattoo removal in the apocalypse? And Snyder says, I would say that there's been some water under the bridge. Who knows what happened? I don't know if he's wearing makeup. I don't know what's happening. It's hard to say exactly. So it's just kind of like insert headcanon there. Did he have another acid bath that kind of got rid of it? Is he just wearing makeup over the damaged tattoos? 
it's just not really meant to be thought about that deeply. I know that may annoy some continuity like buffs out there, but I think we can all put that one aside for the sake of just getting rid of those tattoos. Other than just everything I spoke about in the article, it was really just about how the director, as Vanity Fair said, had a few things he wanted to add to the long-awaited Snyder Cut in terms of when he finally got a chance to finalize his own cut of the movie, and in his own words, Batman's nemesis was one of them. The Joker is really the only thing that I'd thought of in retrospect, but I will say that it was always my intention to bring Joker into that world, but as we know, as the years went along, the Snyderverse kind of like collapsed in and caved in on itself. And now we're finally getting this one little kind of beacon to the fans out there. And I just guess we're gonna have to look forward to seeing what he managed to pack in from the potential future we could have got in this one movie but overall I, I i think it's all right guys i'm not gonna pretend like we all have personal preferences for what we uh, traditionally want the joker to be like in our heads in live action no joker will really ever be one and one the same i knew he would have his long hair we all did we all kind of suspected the no tattoos thing would be a thing because i i think even snyder would have been known he would have been silly to have maintained that because fans even his fans really hardcore fans were probably unanimous on the damaged tattoo. But that is the video, guys. I've been rambling forever. Sorry if I seemed overexcited in this video because when it comes to stuff like this, I I very much so just completely get immersed in, in the absolute geek out mode. But I trust you guys are kind of feeling the same. Whether that's for better or for worse in terms of what you think about this. But I think we should look at it in the most optimistic way because whether you kind of really dig this or just really don't dig this but still kind of feel like where I am, like it's better than what we got in Suicide Squad, I'm very much so looking forward to the nightmare sequence exploring, you know, Joker talking about Batman to Batman. Uh, the ruffled feathers being brought up, quite literally, of the Robin that died. How that may be visited upon in the nightmare sequence. Wow. You have got my attention, and we're going to find out fairly soon in the Snyder Cut. So make sure you leave me your thoughts down in the comments below. Like this video if you did. Enjoy it. Subscribe for more updates just like this. As always, check out the top pinned comment in my comment section to my social media, where you can follow me, where I'm most active on Twitter. And I think that's everything. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a lovely rest of your day, and I'll see you, Bat Family, in the next video. Goodbye.